what he suggested and i think he has a piece that just came out today on it i i saw briefly on twitter uh, but it's that we can account or make might be able to account for entanglement by employing the notion of retro causality so backward causation and when we I, so I don't really know how to say it properly uh, with, with the physics jargon, but mm -hmm. when we when we interact with one particle and it, for lack of the right words, uh, fixes or affects the state of another one simultaneously, we can account for this by uh, thinking of the first particle as sending information backward in time. Uh, to the point where these two particles uh, first interacted. Have you heard of this or thought of that? Or well, I've, Look, I, I, everything you're just describing, you could read in many places. Um, okay. Did I describe it okay for my audience? You, you, you described what you would read in a perfectly adequate way. Oh, perfect. I, I don't I don't think you can make any sense of it. I just literally don't think you can make sense of something going backward in time or, you know, I mean, I think, you know, causes precede their effects, precede them in time. And that's, you know, what makes them the causes and the other things, the, the effects. But the idea of something traveling backward in time in this sense, I, I don't think you can make, I don't think actually you can make any sense of it. Um, it it's, um, certainly, you don't want to, the, the way time and time direction play into quantum theory is very sensitive to what version of quantum theory or which of these particular theories you're talking about. Um, the Schrodinger equation is time reversible. So from the present state, given that equation, I can both completely predict the future and retrodict the past by more or less the same mathematical considerations. In a, in a spontaneous collapse theory like GRW, that's just not true because the collapses, actually, actually, as it were, go in a pre preferred direction of time. There are no uncollapses that, that you know, uh, if you just looked at the wave function and what it does according to that theory, you could say, oh, that's the future direction I see. Um, so those, those are two things that would be called quantum theories and their relation to the direction of time is, in, is entirely opposite um i personally don't think I, I i actually don't think this talk about time reversibility i don't think even that's good terminology what's what what you really have is a velocity reversal symmetry but that doesn't imply there's no direction of time but what i just said many people will disagree with and i will disagree with them it's a long story about whether there's a problem of direction of time and if there's a problem what it is and and what its solution would be. Sean certainly um, would disagree with me about the direction of time, I know for sure. What he would say about it is has nothing to do with retro causation. It has nothing to do with the sort of thing that Hugh's talking about, right? Um, and you, know, you have a bunch of moving pieces here. You have the notion of causation, you have the notion of cause and effect. You have this phrase, something going backward in time, whatever the heck that's supposed to mean. Um, am I going backward in time right now? Why not? I mean, am I going forward in time right now? I mean, I, I think I am because I think time itself is going forward. And, you know, so, but I, yeah, this is a whole mare's nest of conceptual uh, and philosophical issues that are all interconnected in very complicated ways. And I can't say anything dispositive about it um, that would be comprehensible. But what you, the way you describe people talking about it, yes, that's the way they talk about it. I'm going to solve this problem of non-locality by having causes that go back in time. Right? There's no causes that go this way. They go this way and then that way. Right? That's what you yeah. just described. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I, I, I actually think that's not even quantum mechanics because quantum mechanics, let me say what, quantum mechanics would say the universe could have started out in an entangled state, okay? So I do these two experiments right after the Big Bang, right after the beginning of the universe, experiment here, experiment here, it's in an entangled state, you violate Bell's inequality, 
nothing could go back and come back forward because there's no back to go to because I just started the universe. That's perfectly possible quantum mechanically. Perfectly possible. Nothing would rule that out. So if your theory needs that backward, forward, zigzaggy thing, no guarantee you're even going to have it. And quantum mechanics doesn't work that way anyway. You don't calculate backward and then forward and then backward and then forward. You always calculate forward. The, the, the equations are just solved in one direction. You don't do any zigzaggy stuff. Yeah. It's just not the way it works. And it's very hard mathematically to even understand how to how to solve a, a theory right. that would have equations that work like that.